folks thanks for stopping by kaiser's castle today um grab yourself a coffee tea soda or adult libation and grab a seat on my big orange couch i've lowered the drawbridge to let you in for this little tale to be told um i found an interesting thing today i had a whole different show planned to do i wanted to do two back-to-back -back shows that means a show yesterday with dave milner and a show today with just me and Everybody who likes to attend Kaiser's Castle. <clears throat> One of the interesting things that I uh, saw today caused me to remember some things. And I wanted to uh, expand on it a bit. Because I don't think uh, he was using... Uh, it was Tim Pool who inspired it. By the way, that um, music you heard is Inside Enemy Headquarters by Axion Ghost. There will be a link in the description. Uh, Tim Pool is the one who brought it up today. <clears throat> It's about gang stalking and people who are thinking they're targeted people, targeted persons. Um, well, it's here's a little funny thing just to let you know. As you all know, I worked, you know, in the military, a couple different uh, branches, Army and Marine. I was a military policeman in both, and a couple federal agencies. 
law enforcement is included in that. And uh, I find it funny. Um, I've seen this, in, and he was right. It did start around the 9-11 conspiracy time. Everybody always saying this happened, that happened, and they were being stalked. But there was something I think he didn't quite cover as it needed to uh, be covered. It, these people have always existed. Delusional disorder people, also known as, you know, schizophrenia, schizophrenia or their schizophreniacs. Um, and it always manifests in the paranoia. It does. Now, he was not wrong when, you know, just because you're paranoid doesn't mean you're not being followed or something. So let's not get that twisted because working in the different uh, ways that I've worked around, you know, you're in a foreign country. Um, for, I know some of you like to talk shit when I throw selfies up, but there's a reason for that. And, uh, you know, working in foreign countries, you know, when you go out into town or something, you'll get followed. But most of the time, you're getting followed by people because, guess what? You don't either look like them or they can tell you're an American by the way you dress. And, uh, you know, could you get paranoid over that? Well, yeah. Might be some terrorist trying to figure out a way to get you. Might be somebody from that country's intelligence agencies. Uh, I'll give you a prime example. Uh, I used to think England was the most surveilled country I'd ever visited until I went to Singapore. Singapore, I've never seen such surveillance. I mean, surveillance in hotel hallways, it's everywhere. Um, I, they probably have all the hotel rooms mic'd and they probably have video somewhere stuck in there. I wouldn't put it past them because they're just, it's a paranoid country. That whole country suffers from, you know, this delusional disorder uh, because they're always afraid Malaysia is going to come back and take that jewel of Singapore back from them. And they're probably not wrong. So, see, that's where you have paranoia that might be a little legit. And you might really want to, you know, take a look at it as a government or whatever. But here in the U.S., I'll pull it up so I can read it verbatim to you. Uh, summary section of 18 U.S.C. 242, Title, four, title 18 is the criminal titles. For anybody, any, uh, it, it makes it a crime for any person. I'm going to read it verbatim. It is a crime for a person acting under color of law. That means they have some sort of governmental authority. To willfully deprive a person of a right or privilege protected by the Constitution or laws of the United States. There is another subsection that me and BZ has done a show on that's civil. This is criminal. This is where you're going to go to the hooskow and go to prison if you do it. Okay? If you do this kind of crap, you will go to prison. And, and by the way, it is illegal for intelligence agencies to work within the U.S. Am I going to tell you they don't work within the U.S.? No, I will not tell you that because I would be lying to you. But they have to have specific things they're doing and assisting other agencies, i.e. some sort of JTF, a joint task force. That's a fact. Now, if you're being... And, Here's the nexus of this. Gang stalking is what they used to call it. But it's manifesting into people on both the right, more the left than the right, but where people think, oh, my car got broken into. Well, that's got to be clandestine government agents uh, coming to visit me. Uh, you know, they don't want me to know, and yet my car's a wreck. No, it was probably the local crackhead or pillhead trying to see if you got any pills in your car so they can swallow them or got some change in your daggone ashtray of your car even though some cars nowadays don't have them people still put them in that little armrest and have some change in there that's probably what it is or maybe it's somebody who's just interested in uh, in you because they're a freak show you have that kind of stuff too but that's not gang stalking folks you know 
and then I've seen it on the internet. You guys can see it too. Red cars, all these red cars. Look in the parking lot. I'm being followed in the Walmart. No, the fuck you're not. You're just seeing red cars because people like red cars. So shut the fuck up. Now there's some other things that make me laugh. I have to be very frank and honest with you. Uh, some of this stuff, when I see it, I'm just like, what? How does this manifest, and why does it manifest? Uh, it's pretty simple normally. I'm just going to be very honest with you. In my experience, you can be paranoid, uh, temporary paranoia, usually induced by situations. And I do suggest that to any client, to have a healthy dose of paranoia. And that way you know where you're at, where you can see what you're doing, um, so you're not caught off guard by something that's that could be potentially dangerous to you. And what I mean by that is, if you're in the grocery store, and, some, and you're a woman especially, or you're coming out of a grocery store and you're a woman, um, look around you if somebody's following you down the aisles well there's probably a problem make a make a turn a right hand turn or a left hand turn you decide you're you're free people take your own decisions and see if they follow you down that aisle and then just make another left and go back to the aisle you went down and if they follow you there guess what you might be being followed well, the appropriate thing there is maybe go up to the manager, you know, the front desk area, general services, I think is what they call them, at Kroger or Walmart, and you go up there and you say, I think somebody's, you know, following me, and it would be more apt to be a male following a female than a female to following a male men, so you're not going to get away with this. This is where women get some privilege. And you report it to the manager. Maybe they'll have the bag boy follow you out or come out to help you bag your groceries. Uh, I also suggest if you got concealed carry, carry your gun. That's the best in feminine, feminine protection. But that's what I mean by situational awareness. You know, when you're walking up to your car, don't just get in the car without looking. Uh, and we're talking, if you're not going to a grocery store, you're tired, getting off work, you go up into the parking garage, you turn the key, you don't look in the back seat, you didn't look around the vehicle, you didn't look at other vehicles for people malingering in them, and the next thing you know, you got somebody pushing you in the back seat, doing bad things to you, or hurting you, and robbing you, whatever. They'll either rob you of your money or something even more personal and private. So don't let that happen. Have some situational awareness. That's a healthy dose of paranoia. If all of a sudden you're going to the parking lot or parking garage and you're seeing 12 red cars and a couple of them happen to be near your car, it's probably nothing at all. So just let it be nothing at all. Uh, first off, if the government is especially if they're doing it serendipitously, especially if you uh, if it's a law enforcement agency or an actual federal agency, if your car is a wreck, then they're not really looking at you. And I'll tell you why. If somebody's doing a black bag job on you, you will never know anybody's been in your office or in your office, in your car, wherever, your house, because I don't care what traps, quote unquote, you do. Uh, putting a match over a desk drawer, putting a match over uh, your door, whatever, and you're waiting to see if it drops, well, they're professionals. They're going to see that this dropped from somewhere, and they're also going to look-see and see if there's something within the cracks. All doors have cracks. There's ways you can look through things and see things. So, like I said, it will be arranged perfectly like you left it. And you will never know anybody's been in your home or your vehicle. If it's the government. Uh, do I think groups do that? I think there's been the errant people. I mean, now we're seeing groups with Antifa going to people's homes. But they're pretty open about that. And they do it when people are there or not there. But you're either going to come back to a burned out house. Or, you know, you're going to have an issue at your house. Who cares? You know, th this is what this society is allowing right now and you're allowing it 
So, you know, you bought that ticket, took the ride, too. You could have said stuff to your congressmen and your senators and made this stuff go away, but you didn't. So don't sweat it. You caused it. So did I. Uh, so I don't absolve anybody of any responsibility here, including myself. Uh, the other thing I'll say is um, it's very easy to have paranoia take over you. Trust me, having been followed overseas legitimately... Uh, oh, if the oh, that's the other thing. Uh, somebody comes, knocks on your door. I, I don't want to forget this aspect of it. And they just say hi, or you know, this, that, or the other. A question. Maybe it's just somebody that is lost or asking for you know, thinks that you know, or they maybe might have lived there before. I remember going back to Cleveland Heights as a teenager, and uh, with a girlfriend who happened to live up there once. And we knocked on the door of these people. They were older people. And they let us in because I wanted to see the house we used to live in. And they were like, oh, yeah, come on in, kids. And great people. But, you know, nowadays with this paranoid delusion that everybody's spreading via the Internet, that's the problem. These unwell people are getting together on the Internet and finding justification in their own unwellness. With that being said, I'm going to take a pause real quick to let you guys contemplate this. It's about a minute 30 break that I'm going to take, and it's, it's game time. It's what I normally lead off with uh, from Axion Ghost, and you guys have all heard it before, so here it goes. And just enjoy as I take this break. See how that happened, folks? I had to get up and refresh everybody's coffee, tea, soda, and adult libation here at Kaiser's Castle. And I lit a cigarette for a little personal break. Now, getting back to what we were talking about. Now we know we're dealing with on gang stalking and this thing where people think they're activists and the police are watching them. Um, you know, having at one time just because of the nature of my work. It does happen. You'll get a visit or something from somebody. Uh, could that cause me to go into paranoia? Oh, I'm being... No, they came by and they talked to me about something. Do I suggest you talk to the police or talk to anybody that comes up? No, I don't. Get a lawyer to do that. But, you know, if you decide to talk with them, that's on you. So, th these are things that are real. Okay, if you've put yourself out there, you've done something, then you're going to get a visit. It doesn't matter if you didn't do anything wrong. They're going to, hey, why were you, what's, what's this picture about? This is the reality of it. Okay, you can either talk to them or say, we'll get, we'll get my lawyer. Don't let them in. None of that. But should, it, should you go paranoid over it? No, no. Don't be, re, don't be a retard. Look, everybody's got their own mental illness, everybody, including me. 
I'm sure I'm riddled with PTSD and all other kinds of shit. Probably get paranoid sometimes, a little overly, but not really. It, it has happened once or twice when I've, you know, gotten in a black foul mood. But that's on me. That's not on you. And the same thing for everybody else. And I don't feed that out into the ether to try to find other people to believe what I believe. Okay? That's like cultish behavior. Sect behavior. You don't do that kind of shit. And that's what they've done. It's just like I've talked with everybody, like Angel and everybody. The cool thing about the UFO thing, whether it's real or not, it's a chance for people of like minds to get together, just like people who play on ham radio. It's a subculture. It's something that everybody has a common interest in. These people happen to have a common interest in their own mental problems. And uh, if it was illegal for a government agency to do any of the things, and I found out, and it was a fact, I would go after them civilly or criminally. After subsection 242. Okay, just remember the famous band from the 80s, Front 242. You'll never forget that... Um, phrase now that I've told you and it's color of law under 18 USC so you just remember front 242 for subsection 242 that is your rights and when they say your rights everybody will say oh it's my this is my right this is my civil right no your civil rights come from the bill of rights that's where it all stems from you don't have a right outside of the civil rights and the constitution and bill of rights are specifically put there to put handcuffs on authority. That is why this is not a fascist state. You know, everybody will always try to say, oh, the mass slip on the left, because the police had to do their job because you morons were throwing fireworks. Not getting into that now. That's not what the point of this is. The point of this is, now, with this whole subculture developing, if you see people like this, and it's easy for all of us to placate them. It's easy for anybody to placate them because you really don't want to deal with them. And you'd be like, yeah, this is, yeah, yeah, man, that's, that's real. That's really happening. In the security industry, it thrives on it because you want people to have a certain level of paranoia because there's real security threats. But when there's not a security threat, you don't play it like there is one. So, you know have some common sense about you I guess but we live in an age where common sense is lacking I mean where somebody can say the male penis is a social construct instead of an appendage on a man because it was developed by the sperm and egg the ovum the sperm and ovum inside the sacred womb of the mother so don't get ridiculous on this shit and that's the problem a lot of people have lost grasp of reality this is your daily dose of reality today. You know, when I went back, I'll never forget going back to Germany after the fall of the wall, uh, meeting up with a lot of my brothers. All of us have a certain sense of safety. All of us have a certain sense of brotherhood and bonds. And we all respect and love each other. None of us are paranoid, but we all know what's happening. You know, and, and that was even former adversaries that we met up with. So... And there wasn't no fear of like, oh, something bad's going to happen. No, man. We were just getting together to have some beers. If the, if the government wants to look at it, fine. Who gives a shit? You know? So, all I'm saying to you folks is try to recognize it. If you see it in somebody, don't placate them. I mean, everybody sometimes placates them. I can't fault you for that. I've done it too. Family, friends, that kind of shit. Uh, but try to tell them, hey, man, you know, look at what's going on. Just see what's happening. I want you to understand what's happening. Am I saying that some people might not be or might be targeted by some idiots? I'm definitely saying that could be a possibility. Uh, but there's a big difference between a government, professional government job, and the government's not going to go and leave messages with a messed up car and a rummaged house what they're going to do is they're going to get a warrant and they're going to rummage through your house and leave it a mess that way that's how this works they get to fuck your house up and then you get to sue them this is how it works same thing with your car coming across the border uh, CBPO's or, or ICE agents or somebody they rifle your car 
They tear it apart. They drill holes in it. They do whatever. Your boat. It doesn't matter. Uh, you get a little form, and the government says, take this to your lawyer, and file, file a claim against the government, and of course you won't get paid because of different you know, reasons. Uh, they have something called, uh, it's a type of immunity. So you're not going to get any joy out of that. So, because they're doing it in the performance of their job and they don't have time to take everything down and put it back nicely. Well, if they bust shit up, though, and stuff, then you can go after them civilly under 1984 or uh, 242 Color of Law. I, I, I want to stop using that acronym because there's 1983, which is civil. So, anywho, this is the whole deal on it. Uh... But do try to intervene as much as you can if you're a very good friend or a family member of somebody like this. Because what they'll do is they'll just go onto the internet and they'll find more people and they'll argue with you. And it's sad to see when people get lost in the sauce. And, you know, if somebody... I'm not saying everybody who thinks... I'm not saying that everybody's paranoid is wrong. I'm saying... You don't know, you can't identify, it's it's not professional government agencies doing it if your car is fucked up and your house is fucked up, uh, unless you're there and being arrested, because then it will get fucked up, they'll toss it, that's just what they do, so anyways, it, it's just something Tim Pool struck a nerve with me today, and uh, you know, it's sort of like the men in black thing too, you know, are there men in black? Yeah, there are. Do things happen? Yeah, they do. But you would know it. It wouldn't just be what abs. Okay. Um, with that being said, uh, what I want you all to do is please finish your coffee, tea, soda, or adult libation. Uh, thank you for sitting on my big orange couch. And I'll slowly raise that drawbridge that I lowered for you earlier as you meander on out of Kaiser's Castle. With that being said, shove out. <laughs>